Um, welcome to another virtual BFA uh, grad UBCO artist talk series. It's a mouthful. Uh, my name is Kelsey and I am the learning and community engagement curator here at the Vernon Public Art Gallery. And um, just before we begin as a cultural institution, I'd just like to acknowledge that uh, we are currently situated on the unceded and ancestral territory of the Seelix people. And I'd also like to give a thank you to Alternatives Funeral and Cremation Services for sponsoring some of our programming here at the Art Gallery. And tonight, I'm really happy to introduce to you all Faith Wandler. So she is a recent graduate from the UBCO BFA um, program, and we have her work up at the Art Gallery until July 21st. Um, so a bit of housekeeping before we begin. Um, I am going to be recording this talk and we will be uploading it to our, UB, or sorry, our YouTube page. So if you do not want to be filmed and uploaded on the World Wide Web, please turn off your cameras and your mics. And then in the, the Q&A period, we'll turn them back on if you'd like to ask uh, Faith a question or if you're comfortable, we have our chat. So you can uh, leave a question in the chat and then I can relay it over to Faith. And that's about it. So without further ado, I'd like to give a warm virtual welcome to Faith. So take it away. Thank you, Kelsey. I'm just gonna turn on my screen share. Um, so before I start, I would also like to respectfully acknowledge that I am currently situated on the traditional unceded territory of the Silk's Okanagan peoples and I am privileged enough to live and work on these lands. Um, I would also like to uh, say that a lot of my work deals with mental health. So if anyone's uncomfortable with that, feel free to um, step out or take a moment. Um, but yeah, let's go. So um, this piece is from 2019. It was like my first experience within the classroom of using mixed media. Um, and I basically did this as like a final project. So it was close to the end of the year, it was exam period. Um, it was my second year and I was super overwhelmed, um, not in the greatest spot mentally, very stressed and exhausted from the year. Um, and so I decided to make a giant journal piece so this is a 22 by 30 inch sheet of paper um, and I hung it on my wall and basically just readdressed it every day as if I were writing journal entries. So I have on the right hand side, I did a checklist of the things I needed to get done that day um, or within that week. Um, I have little snippets of thoughts and kind of more intrusive thoughts and I find that um, when I have these anxious tendencies or thoughts, making them a visual aspect instead of having them float around within my mind is a very cathartic process and it allows me to move on. Um, so this next piece is called Rethink, Think, and Think Again. Um, it is acrylic ink on watercolor paper. There were five of them. Um, I ended up selling one of the five pieces, but uh, this was experimentation with using word as form. So I was wanting to bring into my practice the use of sayings and words and repetitive thoughts and the way in doing so within the art world is you have to have a reason to do it and it needs to have a place. And um, so I started playing with shapes and how I could contort the words to fit with the shapes I was creating. And a lot of the shapes on the background were more like meditation. Um, so I would do some words and then uh, take a break and go over it with the ink to kind of free myself up and not feel so constrained to uh, like the rigidity of my mind. <clears throat> so yeah, I was bringing the words out and thought about like the dwelling thoughts and having them become visual so they no longer hold space in my mind. Um, so they're no longer 
taking over energy that I could be using towards something else. Instead, they're being put on the page and left there and they have a presence on the page, but they don't have to have a presence um, that is weighing over me. So I took these processes and these patterns and shapes and decided to deconstruct them. Um, so this is a triptych from 2020. Um, the word that I used to go through these three pieces was keep. Um, and I was thinking of the word keep as to retain or possess something or to lock something away. So such as like feelings and things you don't necessarily want to address. Um, so I was experimenting with how I could keep the flowy inviting shapes, but use the idea of layers as a symbol of my own mental health layers and my own layers within my, my own thinking. Um, and I really came into loving the idea of sewing um, these pieces together. So they're all, basically I took giant pieces of paper and ripped them apart, um, did my shapes and writing on them and then pieced them back together again. And then I would use a sewing machine to uh, reattach it all together so it's one big piece. This turned into uh, this piece. So this was like where it kind of all came together. Um, this piece is titled Existential, um, which is so the definition of existential is like questioning your life and the meaning of your life and the value you have within the world. Um, so a lot of people, at least for me, I find like if you're having a little breakdown and trying to figure out who you are, you're having like an existential crisis. Um, and I definitely felt that way multiple times. So I wanted to put that into this piece because that word was really holding a weight on me. Um, and then the butterflies are a symbol of breaking away from that self-doubt and that constant questioning of yourself and your practice and the meaning of life because nobody's ever going to really understand what that is. Um, this piece is about seven feet um, and I hope to add to it. So just make it even longer from the bottom. Uh, one of my inspirations for this past year and my fourth year was Kelly Mark. Um, the way she works is uh, she's a Canadian conceptual artist and she works around the discussion of mundane rituals in your everyday life. So things you wouldn't really think twice about, she addresses. Um, this one is called What Counts is the Impression You Leave Behind. And she sat and kind of thought about her life. Um, she had just turned 50 and she just put a mark down for every day she had been alive. So there's 18,250 marks on this sheet and it's done on like a foam core. So she basically just did impressions on the sheet. And that repetitive process really caught my eye. Um, because I really like to work with repetition in my work. Um, that's kind of how my head works. I have a lot of repetition in my brain. So, yeah. So that like kind of led to this piece. Um, it's called estrangement. And estrangement is when you feel like you're no longer a part of a group or you're having like a separation. So this was made in my fourth year um, during online learning. And I dealt with a lot of feelings of feeling disattached to myself because I was going through a very rigid routine of the same thing every single day and not leaving the house. But as well as with that, I was also being disattached from my peers. So we weren't having those conversations about our works and our creativity. And so that kind of manifested into this piece where I just sat down and I had the time so I decided that I was going to stitch out every single letter 
onto the paper. And it is paper. It ended up um, having more of a fabric tactility to it once it was finished, which I find really neat. Um, but yeah. So then we have my embroidery hoops. I have close-ups. They're a set of five. Um, so these are the close-ups. And then this is all five of them together. So this one's called Poking My Eyes Out. Um, the smallest hoop is around four inches and the largest hoop is around 10 inches and the others like range in between that. Um, so this, these pieces were more about like the physical manifestations of my anxiety and how um, a lot of the time I don't recognize I'm doing these things, but they can be quite like harmful to myself, um, such as like constantly picking at my skin or picking at a scab on my finger or poking at my eyes. And, um, and a lot of the time those things aren't recognizable to me when I'm doing them because it's just a it's a way that I de-stress I guess so I wanted to have these embroidery hoops that are quite beautiful and they have um, a lot of tactility to them but they have like a very rawness to what's behind the imagery and these were just up at the um, the Lake Country Art Gallery um, during a laundry room collective pop-up they they just came down um, now we're on to my grad work so these are up at the Vernon Public Art Gallery until July 21st um, so I did these two scroll pieces I don't have a close-up of the other one but one says accept with an a and the other says accept with an e and from afar they both look similar. They both look like they're meant to be together, but in actuality they're counteracting one another. So um, coming into my final year, I had a lot of doubt in like what I want to do with my life and doubt around picking this as my degree. Um, so there was a lot of times where I was told to just like accept what's to come. Um, don't dwell on it. Just think about the happiness that it's going to bring you. And I would get into that, that swing of things of being like, yeah, like I'm good with this, I can accept this. But then there's also that doubt that comes in afterwards and that's the accept. Um, so yeah, I used my typewriter and typed out the words over and over again on different types of paper and then just went through like layering them because those repetitive words and thoughts is like, that's kind of a visual of what I see in my head when I'm dwelling on things. My final piece is my book. Um, I got into book binding in my third year and I find that like the beauty of a handmade book is something that is really hard to capture in a photo. So um, Come after COVID, I really want people to be able to interact with my art and touch it and have that next level relationship with what I'm creating. Um, but this book stemmed from, um, I was waking up every morning with crazy like panic attack symptoms, um, basically waking up with my heart beating out of my chest and it's a rude awakening. So I would sit at my typewriter and just retype racing over and over and over again. And it was a cathartic process that got that, it got me out of my head. And again, just put it on the page. So every page on this book um, says racing. Um, so it's very repetitive. And then after a while, I realized that like, if you're looking at it quickly, you can choose what you want it to say because it also looks like it could be saying bracing. Um, but yeah, I, um, I'm really fortunate to have this work up in the Vernon Public Art Gallery and I can't wait to have it shown so people can actually interact with it and touch it as well. Yeah, thank you.
Awesome. Thanks so much. Oh, I have I have one more slide. Um, cool. It's just a bunch of mental health resources if anyone needs them or feels like they know someone who may um, need them. You can take a screenshot or or anything with that. But yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. Yeah, so I'm the um, education kind of coordinator at the art gallery. So we bring school tours in all the time and the students really are always so drawn to your work. And it's awesome being able to talk to them about it too because I feel like a lot of them can relate in some way or form, especially like with the racing thoughts. And when, as soon as we explain that, always oh, the kids are like, oh, yeah, you too. So. Really oh, I appreciate cool. that, thank you. Yeah, so if anybody has any questions or even just wants to chat and, share any thoughts about um, Faith's work. Now's the time. Oh, my dad's messaging on the chat. <laughs> um, to commemorate my graduation, because it was very, like, as I said, anticlimactic to Kelsey earlier. Um, I ended up taking um, a print of my, like, racing from my typewriter, and I took it to a tattoo artist, and I got it, like, put onto my wrist. Um, so it's like a constant reminder of what my whole school career has come to. Um, but also a reminder to like slow down, like to really just, if you are like going through that, like just take time and breathe and like think about all the other possibilities opposed to just dwelling on the same thing. So yeah. Let's go cool. show it off. Let's see. Oh. It's backwards though or something. Oh, and it's red too. Very cool. Yeah, it's red too. <laughs> that's, a, that's so great. Oh, you have some people in the chat. <laughs> I love how this is like full of my family. It's kind of cringy. <laughs> no! <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm very excited to have your work. Oh, we have somebody. I have a question, Faith. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah, thanks for sharing your work. Um, I've not seen like your full body of work uh, until now. Um, I really like the like the journal concept and the kind of mind map. And um, I notice in some of your work, the kind of textures and layers that you show are, are similar to topographical maps. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you kind of include in your process? Um, so no, I kind of, I didn't think about that until it was really brought out to me, like within critiques. Um, and I haven't fully addressed like why they look that way. I think of it as like layers within my mind opposed to That's layers. what I got from it. Yeah. The kind of layers, the, the mind map concept, it related well to the, the journaling and the checklist. I yeah. thought um, that relationship was there. It didn't necessarily tied to location or anything like that just uh about your memory and uh experiences like day-to-day -day experiences mm -hmm. yeah appreciate that thank you thanks i have a question sure uh, so is there a specific kind of thought or process behind the sewing act of uh, your artwork or is it just purely because you like sewing or um, I really like the process of it um, and I like the amount of time it takes because you have to really like physically be there uh, with the work and paying attention or else you will poke your fingers. Um, I got questioned a lot by professors um, as to why I chose those processes because they take so much time mm -hmm. um, and a big part of it for me was like the symbolism around how much time I spend on myself and how much time, like that's a never ending journey. Like I'm never going to ever be this perfect person. Um, and I'm constantly having to work on myself and my mental health. And I find that putting that into my art practice in methodical ways of creation kind of reflects that for me. And it's just a part of that process. Yeah, that makes sense. That's kind of what I had figured too. I also kind of think of like the domestic sides of things too. As a woman, I can't help but see that as well. But yeah. I definitely feel like the mindfulness because I feel like each stitch is it takes time and effort and you have to be focused and be present. So for sure. Awesome. Hey, what about your 
your the paper that oh, you dad have. you need to get like closer to your speaker or your microphone or something oh because oh. it's over here there Is you that go better? yeah <laughs> um what about what about the paper that you use? I've never asked you, like, is there meaning behind the paper or the substrate that you're using and the types of paper? Like, do you think about how or what you're using or is it just paper? Um, it's never just paper. I'm kind of a paper nerd. I want to get into making my own papers, but like a lot of the papers I do use are all handmade. Um, so they take the machine work out of it. And a lot of them have like this rawness and imperfections to them that I think are really beautiful. And a big part of it too is like finding those textures. Um, it's hard to see in photos, but like there's a lot of textural and tactile elements to what I'm creating. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's not just random paper. <laughs> If anybody else has any questions or thoughts, the floor is open. Um, hi. <laughs> hi, Faith. Hi. Um, I, well, first of all, that was great. I actually didn't know a lot about, especially your last piece with the effect and the affect. I thought that was like really cool. I didn't even know that. I guess, I don't know, with online learning, it's, it's hard to like get everyone's information. But yeah, I just want to say like congratulations and that was awesome. Thank you. Adriana's work is up at the art gallery as well, everyone. So you should go check it out. <laughs> okay. Wow. You need to you need to get one of your relatives to ask a question, Faith. No. <laughs> no? <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah. I mean, they can if they want. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not A-okay. <laughs> Great presentation, so. I feel like I went really fast, but um, yeah, this was my first time doing an artist talk, so I was quite um, nervous, <laughs> but Thank you so much for the opportunity. It was great, great practice. Yeah, it's our pleasure. It's always great to hear more about the work, especially in times like this when you can't go and see like, your actual grad show in person, being able to see the work, you have the artist statement, and then actually hear it from the artist itself. It's, it's really great. So thank you for taking the time to speak with us tonight and share your, your process and your artwork with us. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. Great. Well, if anybody wants to share this video, uh, feel free. Once it's on our YouTube channel, you can, we'll see it up there. And yeah, come check it out if you haven't already. It's up till July 21st. So come take a look. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everybody for popping in. Take Thank care. You so much.